Hi guys, it's Tiny Zom Logan back with another video for you. And today, or now, this time around, because there's going to be a few of them going up pretty close to one another, we're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte Z87X UD4H. Now, we're not that far in already, and I'm sure there is a lot of people out there whose jaw has hit the desk. And I have to admit, when I first saw this, I near enough uh, obliterated the box getting this open because I, I was gagging to see what Gigabyte had done. Now, a lot of uh, the other brands and uh, stuff that are out there, when they do their black and red boards, they obviously have a lot of black, or uh, sorry, they have a lot of red, as in with the red slots, red memory slots, red SATA slots, there's a lot of red around the rest of the board. Gigabyte, uh, with the design of their boards, have other than the sniper range, which have obviously got the, the green slots, most of the other ones, they've kept quite simple. I know the overclocks have got that kind of orange kind of-esque, but the uh, UD5, UD4, the UD3, all the kind of um, non-specific models, because obviously you've got the overclock one, is the, uh, the orange, the snipers, they're, they're heavy gaming uh, focused boards. These are kind of what I would call their kind of mainstream ones. Now the UD4 and the UD5 are gonna be the, the higher end of the mainstream boards, but the, the, all of those kind of UDs uh, are distinguished by this color on the heat sinks. And I have to admit, I didn't think I was going to like it, but fuck me, when these things turned up, have I changed my mind and I mean massively changed my mind I love the the simplicity of this um, but it's really tight I need to shut up and just kind of show you around the board really don't I now you have to bear with me because I'm hugging and by hugging I mean I'm sat behind my tripod with an and a hand either side of where the camera is um, so it's quite difficult so I'm, I'm literally my nose is touching the tripod uh, while I'm trying to show you this but what we'll do is we'll start at the top and we'll work our way around. Now you can see that we've got a, a double bank of um, heat sinks around the power delivery area or the MOSFETs. So if you, we can have a look in there, it's quite easy to see that there are a lot of power phases being fed into this CPU. So although it is only the UD4, because of all those power phases, you can pretty much you know, assume from the get-go that this is going to be delivering some pretty clean power to that CPU so we we, we would expect some reasonable overclocks um, but obviously we're not going to find all that out until we actually start our testing. Um, now if you have a look we've got the large ultra durable written down the side which is a massive push for Gigabyte with this launch but then we've also got the kind of now this is polished Ali it's very very shiny around this bit with the two little red flashes to break it up uh, and it's kind of like the opposite of what we've got on this uh, on the like the shiny red bit now the shiny red bit if I kind of move it around it's like a like a I'm not gonna say polished but a very shiny alley and then it's um, anodized and it does it it really does glisten and catch the light you can see oh you can practically see me you can see the tripod the camera you can see how shiny it is. It really does, you know, catch the light well. I would have thought that once you've got this in your rig with some lights around or some, you know, lit fans or something, for God's sake, don't use red LED fans, but if you had white LED fans, it would catch this. Lovely. But you can see that there's a black, normal kind of style heat sink underneath. And like I said, it does just keep things really simple, but work at the same time. Now, like I said, we've got that large kind of uh, heatsink area around there for the MOSFETs. There is an eight pin CPU power just there and that's the only CPU delivery power that's there. Um, now, I'm looking for fan headers. Right, we've got CPU fan and CP CPU optional fan there, which is quite a strange place to put them because we'd normally have them up there, but obviously that heat sink's in the way. Um, I probably would have preferred to have had the uh, CPU power header, or the CPU, sorry, um, fan there but that's technically wired up as system fan one um, now looking around the rest of the board while we're talking about fans there's system fan four there now where's two we've got system fan three there 
So I'm just looking for System Fan 2. System Fan 1. System Fan 4. System Fan 3. So we're, Ah, there's System Fan 2. It's actually at the bottom of the SATA area there. Now, while we're down the bottom of the board, I suppose I should say, uh, while we're down the bottom of the board, we've got uh, USB uh, internals there. There's, that says USB 2, USB 3, so they're internal USBs. Front panel audio. We've got a secondary front panel USB 3 hidden away down at the bottom with a cover on it. And then that's where all your front panel uh, connectors go. I'm um, just having a look. We've got uh, SATA connections, SATA connections here. Uh, but what I can say, because it's an add-on chip, is that the this one here, the grey one, the two grey ones, are G SATA three. Uh, I'm not allowed to talk to you about the SATA connections that are actually on the Intel chipset, but that one there is an additional gigabyte G SATA three. Notice that these are all one colour though. Uh, so we've got an internal, an internal USB uh, three there, an LCD poster readout, and then we've got a power switch, CMOS clear switch, reset switch. Then up here we've got a BIOS selector switch and the SB switch. We've still not worked out what that is yet. I should have to. I should look it up. And then these are uh, voltage. Um, sort of like multimeter readouts up here. I don't know why they've got them on these boards, to be honest, because you're not really going to be overclocking that much on these boards, I would have thought, but do you know what I mean? Anyway, each of their own. If we come round to the back panel, we can see that we've got PS2 port up there. We've got uh, two USB 3s, VGA out, DVI out. Notice that it's the, the pin layout there. Uh, and then we've got, what's that one? That's uh, DisplayPort, HDMI, optical audio, two USB uh, threes, two more USB threes, HD audio, gigabit ethernet, and then what we've got is two uh, eSATAs and USB twos all in together. Now, if I put that board down there so that you can uh, get another good look and have another look round. Um, what do you think? Uh, I think we've covered the uh, the main bits and bobs. We can see that we've got there's a sticker here. Well, not a sticker, but it's printed on it. it says serial ATA six gigabits a second, and video SLI. I know that it does um, uh, Crossfire too. Uh, something to point out, which is rather strange, is that we have got a PCI, so legacy. I thought we'd seen the last of legacy. Uh, now with this, uh, we've got one, two, three uh, PCI Express ones. This is wired up as a PCI Express 16 times lane. The other two PCI Expresses, this is wired up as an eight. This is wired up as a four. Now that's not necessarily uh, anything to do with the way uh, PCI Express is laid out on the chipset. I'm definitely not talking about chipset features. I'm talking about the way the board has been wired, just to be clear. I have to be pretty anal like this at times because we are skating pretty close to the wind as far as NDAs are concerned and I have to, uh, you know, point out certain bits just to kind of keep my head above water and you know, things like that. But anyway, peeps, the Gigabyte Z87X UD4H preview. It's just a quick hands-on. I'm not allowed to show you CPUs in there. I'm not allowed to show you stuff fitted to it. I'm literally, I'm not even allowed to show you the box. Uh, I'm only allowed to show you the bare board. And even then, like I said, I'm properly, properly skating close to the wind. Um, but what do you think? I'd love to know your comments on the, uh, the fact that we've actually got red accents uh, on this for the first time from Gigabyte. Pretty much, well, I think all of the Z87 boards that Gigabyte are going to be doing are going to have a black PCB now anyway. But I really do like the, the, the way that they're going with the, the colour distinguishing between the, uh, the boards. Um, so yeah, what do you think? Uh, I, I, whoever has made changes in Gigabyte as far as designs concerned with you know, certain aspects, they, they definitely do seem to be like they're starting to listen to us a little bit more now. 
there's still a few bits and bobs that uh, could do with tweaking. They're, they're far from perfect visually, but they're definitely, definitely on the right track. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to crack these boys open and start reviewing them properly now. Um, but I'm just trying to share, you know, with you uh, the, the things that I can share with you before the official launch. Um, so please, I, I know p there are going to be some people that are going to be frustrated about the stuff I'm saying and the stuff I'm not saying. But I'm telling you literally all I possibly can do at the moment. But anyway, I'm going to crack on now. Um, please make sure that you take a look at the other videos that I'm putting up of the Z87, Z87X stuff. Um, but this is now, at least, it's late, Top Gear reference. Um, Tiny Tom Logan, out. <laughs>